So uh, we'll begin with uh, uh, gradient, uh, the subgradient and uh, projected uh, uh, gradient methods. So, hang on. Okay, so first the subgradient method. Uh, just a brief uh, recap. So uh, what is the subgradient? So we have a convex differentiable function. It's differentiable at a point X in its domain. And uh, if Y is another point in its domain, then since F is a convex function, this property must hold Fx plus a gradient of uh, fx transposed y minus x must be less than equal to fx. Excuse me, fy. Okay, but now suppose this function f is not differentiable at this point x, then we can define a subgradient. Uh, subgradient is a vector g. It's subgradient if and only if. If you take any other point y, then if this property holds, see I'm replacing the gradient with g. g is the subgradient. If this property holds, f of x plus g transpose y minus x should be less than equal to f of y. If this property holds, then g is a subgradient of this function at the point So uh, this is uh, an illustration. This is a function and this is the point X. This function is convex and it's also differentiable at this point X. So uh, the slope we are looking at um, uh, univariate X. So this is uh, just a two dimensional plot. And this is the function Y uh, F of X y equals f of x if this is y. Now I take two points x and I draw at this point here, I draw a uh, tangent line. So the slope of this line is actually the derivative, which is del f of x. Okay. And this is another point y. This is f of y. So this property, you can see that fx plus this gap is del fx transpose y minus x, this gap here, and this is f of x. So this line, horizontal line, cuts at f of x plus del f transpose y minus x, and this is f of y. So this is less than equal to f of y because f of x is a convex function. And here x, uh, at this point x, the function was differentiable Therefore, the gradient could be defined and therefore the subgradient is unique at this point X and it is equal to the gradient. Now, this is another case. And at this point X here, this function, which is still convex, is not differentiable. It's continuous at this point X, but it's not differentiable. And G is a subgradient. So since this is not differentiable at uh, x, therefore its gradient del f of x does not exist, in which case the subgradient at x is not unique. Same situation here. Uh, in this case, um, this point x was actually, uh, it looks like the uh, global minimum of this convex function, but here it's not the global minimum. So. Again, here at this point, uh, x, f of x is uh, not differentiable. It's continuous, not differentiable. And this g is the subgradient, which is again, not unique. So subdifferential. So the set of all subgradients at a point is the subdifferentiable, uh, excuse me, subdifferential sub of the function at the point x. Now, it can be easily shown that the subdifferential, the set, is 
convex because if you take any two points g1 and g2 which are both subgradients uh which that is which are both elements of the subdifferential and then any linear convex combination of them theta g1 plus 1 minus theta g2 also belongs to the subdifferential same situation here all of these are subgradients all three lines here are subgradients of this uh function a non differentiable function at this point x now the first order optimality conditions for uh differentiable functions is x star a global minimum the necessary condition for that is the gradient of f at the point x star must be equal to 0 that's the necessary uh, first order kkt condition right uh, but we are looking at uh, no constraint so unconstrained so the derivative must be equal to 0 at the optimum minimum now what if the function is not differentiable how do we test for uh, x star being a global minimum or not the necessary condition is that the zero must belong to the subdifferential of x at the point x star so the every line uh, between this and this red line see this whole uh, shaded region they are all uh, different subgradients so this whole thing is the subdifferential and the horizontal line is uh, the zero here uh, the green line here okay you can see the green line right that has a slope of zero and that belongs to this subdifferential and so you can see at this point x star is uh, it's a minimum f of x is at a minimum at x star okay this is the necessary condition x star is a global minimum if zero belongs to the subdifferential of f at the point x star now take this situation here the subdifferential is again the shaded region here but zero does not belong to the subdifferential at this point x this is the horizontal line which is zero and it does not belong to the subdifferential and therefore we cannot say that this point x is a global minimum it doesn't satisfy the necessary condition for being a global minimum am i clear yes okay and uh, now this is an example of a subdifferential i take f of x to be the absolute value of x this blue plot here so when x is positive the absolute value of x is equal to x fx equals x and when x is negative f of x equals negative x right and so when x is strictly negative x is less than 0 the slope is negative 1 and therefore when x is less than 0 strictly less than 0 the subgradient is equal to the gradient which is negative 1 it's unique likewise when x is strictly positive then f of x is x and so the slope is plus 1 everywhere when x is greater than 0 the slope is plus 1 and that serves as the subgradient now when x is exactly equal to 0 what is the slope at this point 0 it, here not unique in fact if you you can draw many different lines uh, uh that can be tangent at this point 0 0 at the origin to this blue line, blue surface blue block right as long as the slope of that line um is between plus 1 and negative 1 it can be a subgradient that line that you draw can be a subgradient okay so the subgradient at the point x equals 0 is 
anything between negative one and plus one. So this is subdifferential. This entire re, uh, um, interval between negative one and positive one is the uh, subdifferential uh, subdifferential at the point x equals zero. This is another similar example. Uh, f of x is excuse me, this is max. So I should have written a max here, max of one comma x squared. So f of x equals x squared as long as x squared is uh, greater than one. When x squared is less than one, then um, f of x is one. So if this is the x-axis. When x act, when x is uh, less than negative one, then f of x is x squared. When f of x is greater than plus one, f of x is x squared. And when x is between negative one and one, f of x is one. So this blue plot here is the function f of x. Remember, there's a, there's a max here. And this is the subdifferential. So when x is less than negative one in this region, x is somewhere here, then f of x is x squared and its derivative is 2x. So 2x is the uh, subgradient or gradient, uh, and that's the uh, unique uh, subgradient, and that defines subdifferential. Now, when we look at x equals, uh, let's skip this one. Let's go to when x is strictly between negative one and one. When x is strictly between negative one and one, f of x is one, right? And so the slope is zero. That's the uh, gradient, which is the unique subgradient, zero here. When x is strictly between negative one and one. Now, when x is equal to negative one, x is exactly here. Anything between negative two and zero will serve as the subgradient. So this entire limit, uh, interval, negative two to zero, is the subdifferential of the function f at x equals negative one. Likewise, when x equals one, this entire open interval between zero and two is the subdifferential of the function. Here's a two-dimensional example. Now, this is a little more complicated, okay? F of x is x infinite, the um, infinite norm of and what is the infinite norm? By definition, it equals to the maximum of the absolute values of all its individual entries xi. Okay, now let's take a simple case um, uh, when x is two dimensional. So x has uh, two components, x1 and x2. So f of x, which is the infinite norm of x is max of absolute value of x1 and absolute value of x2, okay? And uh, if you look at this uh, figure here, uh, these are the contours of, or the level curves of the absolute, uh, of the infinite norm of um, x. This is x1, this is, x2, the y-axis is x2 and the x-axis is x1. And everywhere, if you look at uh, these uh, green uh, square regions, uh, in any of these squares, the value of the infinite norm is constant. Okay. I hope you can interpret this figure correctly. Now, this, the gradients or the subdifferential is defined as follows. I'm actually uh, writing the subgradient, not 
or differential. Okay, so don't uh, think of these as uh, open intervals. They're actually, these are vectors con uh, transposed. Anyways, so how do we get this? Let's look at this case. Now here, in I all uh, looking at this red triangle here. In this region, you see uh, the vertex of this triangle is uh, at the origin. So everywhere um, x1 is positive. So you don't have to extract its absolute value. x1 is positive. And everywhere in this region, now x2 can be either positive or negative because uh, we are going below this uh, x-axis and above, right? So x2 can be positive here or it can be negative here, okay? But its absolute value of x2 is always less than um, x1. So everywhere in this triangle, zero is less than equal to x2, which is less absolute value of x2 because x2 can be plus or minus, which is less than x1. And x1 is always positive. Okay, so what's the value of the function f of x? What's this here? x2 absolute value is less than x1. So this function f of x is equal to x1 everywhere here, correct? So everywhere in this red triangle, f of x is equal to x1. If f of x is equal to x1, what's its gradient? Now it's two dimensional, right? So if we differentiate this function with respect to x1, what do we get? One, right? This one here. If we differentiate this function with respect to x2, you see it's only x1. It's not even dependent on x2. So when we differentiate f of x with respect to x2 in this region, we get a zero. So one zero is the gradient which is also the subgradient. Now let's look at this point in this red line here. Now here, x1 and x2 are both positive and they're both equal. Okay, so this is uh, the condition that satisfied everywhere in this red line. Both x1 and x2 are positive and they are both greater than zero. So what is f of x? It can be either x1 or x2. I don't have to take the absolute value since they're both positives and Either one will be fine because x2 equals x1. So I can either take f of x equals x1 or I can take f of x equals x2, correct? Or I can take any convex combination of them. So I can define some alpha which is anywhere between zero and one. And so f of x, I can say that it's equal to alpha x1 plus one minus alpha x2 as long as x1, x2 lie on this line, red line. Agreed? Do you guys have any questions up to this point? Uh, yes, Dr. Das, I have a question. Uh, when should we calculate uh, subgradient? Like uh... When the function is not uh, differentiated. Uh, but it has to be continuous, right? It has to be continuous, yes. Okay. At these, um, at, at this point, it's you can see that it's it's like a pyramid shape, right? Yes. 
yeah. uh, with four square pyramid, mm -hmm. right? And uh, these are the corners of the pyramid. If, are you looking at the pyramid vertically? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I just want to make sure that um, I'm uh, uh, recording. Uh, it's going on. Recording is going on. Okay. Yeah, it's showing recording. Okay. So are we clear with this? Uh, this um, red line here, 45 degree red line. Now, let's take this region here. Throughout this region, X2 is positive because this entire triangle here um, lies above this uh, X axis. So X2 is positive, but X1 can be positive or negative. On the left side, X1 is negative, and on the uh, right side, X1 is positive, correct? Now, everywhere, X2 is more than the absolute value of x1. That's this region. So we define this uh, region uh, uh, inside this triangle with this condition. Zero is less than or equal to absolute value of x1, because x1 can be either positive or negative, and that's less than x2. x2 is strictly positive, and it's more than the absolute value of x1. Okay, and so what is f of x? It's equal to x2. The larger of the two, and I don't even have to take the absolute value because x2 is already positive. So f of x is x2, right? And what's the gradient? And here it's different shape. The function f is different shape everywhere here. And what's its gradient with respect to x1, the derivative is zero. And the derivative with respect to x2 is one. So zero, one, this is the unique subgradient everywhere here. Okay. Now consider this case. This red line, uh, is defined by this uh, condition here. Now let's look at it. Um, here, zero is less than x2. So x2 is always positive and that's equal to negative of x1. x1 is negative everywhere here in this uh, red line and x2 is always positive. And here, x2 equals negative x1. So f of x can either be negative x1, absolute value of x1 is negative x1, which is equal to x2. f of x is equal to negative x1, which is equal to x2. So either negative x1 or x2 can serve as f of x. Or we can take any convex combination of them. So negative alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha x2, where alpha is between 0 and 1, we can define f of x in this way too, as long as x1, x2 lies in this straight line. Okay, now differentiating with respect to x1, we get negative alpha differentiating with respect to x2, we get one minus alpha. Alpha can be anything between zero and one. And so this is the uh, subgradient here. For different values of alpha, we can get different subgradients. And the other um, conditions here follow likewise. So we'll uh, stop this example right here. Any questions? Okay, and we also discussed the subgradient method. And uh, here what we do is, this is very much like the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, gradient descent algorithm. Uh, only difference here is uh, we keep track of the minimum point x min. Okay, we, we, because uh, we are looking at the subgradient and we might overshoot. So we take the subgradient. It might not be del if del is not if uh, uh, if at a, at some point uh, x k minus one uh, uh, f is uh, not differentiable. So in which case you can replace this with the subgradient. You can take any subgradient and then find a convenient value of alpha, uh, and then uh, let x k be equal to x k minus one minus alpha g, and then you have to uh, compare the new value of x, f of x k with f of x min. And um, if uh, the function is smaller than f of x min at uh, x k, then that becomes x, the new x min. So you have to keep track of x min, where you got the minimum value of the function. OK? And uh, this is, uh, as you know, my convention. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can write a while loop here uh, and uh, supply a terminating information. Obviously, you don't have to run it until infinity. Here is an example of um, the subgradient descent algorithm. Here, this is f of x is max of a transpose x plus b. So, uh, uh, a i transpose x plus b i. Each of these a i transpose x plus b i is a uh, hyperplane, or in our little example here, it's just a straight line. It defines a straight line. Okay, and different for different values of i, we get different straight lines. Okay, and we take the max of those, and so that gives us f of x max of all of these. Okay. And this, as you can see, is a convex function. And the R max is the uh, subgradient when this function is differentiable. Otherwise, if at these corners, let's see. So suppose we start at x k minus one, the previous iteration. And at this point, the subgradient is equal to the gradient, which is AI. And so this takes us to the point XK here. At this point XK, the subgradient is equal to this, the, uh, the slope of this line because it's still continuous at xk. And that takes it to, uh, to this point. But at xk plus 1, if we continue with the next iteration, uh, k plus 1, we come to this point here. And here, you see there's a corner. This solid blue line, there's a corner right here. The function f of x is not differentiable. So we can take any convex, convex combination of this A and this A, the slope of this and slope of this. Any con convex combination of the two slopes would serve as a subgradient. OK? Or do we have any questions with this? Next is the projected, <coughs> excuse me, the projected gradient. This is applicable when we are uh, trying to uh, uh, find the minimum of a constraint optimization problem. And assuming that the feasible region is convex. Okay, so why is the projection of a point X onto the convex set k if y is the closest point to x which lies in k. So this is 
the convex set K. And Y is part of this convex set K, but it's closest, it's the point in this K, which is closest to X. So, so the projection of this point X onto the convex region K is Y. And note that uh, this will be, if you draw this line from X to Y, uh, then uh, this is orthogonal. And this is the projected uh, gradient algorithm. So here what we do is, it's, uh, uh, it involves an extra step over gradient descent. Each time what we do is, we are at a point xk minus one, and then we uh, find the gradient, uh, and uh, then uh, do this uh, step y equals xk minus one minus alpha of the gradient. I uh, sorry, I didn't write down uh, the step here. Uh, g equals del of uh, f of xk minus one. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, xk minus one, and I update it uh, to y. I get y. But Y is outside the feasible region F. I want to minimize F of X subject to X belongs to F. This is the feasible region and somewhere here is the minimum. These are the contours of the function uh, F of X level sets. So everywhere in this function, uh, everywhere in this contour, F of X is a constant. The gradients are orthogonal to these contours, right? Okay. So I come here and uh, this Y is outside the uh, feasible region. And so I project it to get my new XK. I project Y onto uh, this uh, F, the feasible region, and then I get my XK. That's my XK. And then from this point, again, I uh, compute the gradient G and then take a step in this the direction of the negative gradient. And then what I do is, uh, since again, this point is outside this orange shaded region, I project this point to uh, the feasible region. And this gives me my XK plus one and so on until I reach X star. This is the projected gradient descent algorithm. Now let's look at a special situation where the projection onto a hyperplane. Suppose F is a hyperplane like this. Okay. So how do we project onto this hyperplane. This hyperplane is defined by A transpose X equals B. And uh, this A is a vector. Remember that uh, this vector A will always be orthogonal to this hyperplane defined by A transpose X equals B. This orange shaded um, region is the hyperplane. And now I have a point Y. I want to find the projection of Y onto the hyperplane. So what I have to do, I have to find a point X such that AX equals B, the point X has to lie on this hyperplane. So it must satisfy AX equals B. And I want to find uh, such a point that is closest to Y. That is the distance between Y and X should be minimum, right? So X equals argmin uh, with respect to X such that AX equals B of the L2 norm of Y minus X, which is equal to the argmin uh, with respect to 
y minus x um, L to norm squared, right? If I take the square of the distance, I'll still get the same argument, which is equal to, now we know that um, the L to norm squared of a vector is equal to the vector y minus x times its, uh, sorry, the vector transpose times the vector, right? So this is the same thing as L2 norm squared. And we might as well minimize this here, subject to this constraint, Ax equals b. And note that this uh, line joining y with x will again be orthogonal to this hyperplane, k transpose x equals b. Now this here, so we have to find x like this. This task here defines a constraint optimization problem. This is what we have to do. And it defines this COP, minimized with respect to x of, I just arbitrarily added a half here, half y minus x transpose y minus x, subject to ax minus b equals zero. This is my COP, and this is a convex function. Y minus x transpose y minus x is um, a uh, uh, quadratic, so um, in one dimension, it will be a uh, parabola. Therefore, this is a convex function. And this ax minus b is uh, uh, equality constraint. Therefore, to solve this, remember our objective is to find x uh, as a projection of y. y is given to us. y is some point, and it's given to us. We want to find the projection of y onto ax equals b. We want to find this x. And so once we get the COP, constraint optimization problem, we can uh, write down its Lagrangian. This function plus mu is the dual variable and it has no limits because this is an equality constraint. It can be negative or positive. Mu transpose of Ax minus B. Differentiating the Lagrangian, what do we get? Y derivative of half y transpose y is y, derivative of half of negative two x transpose y is x. Oh, sorry, y is fixed. I'm, excuse me, y is fixed, right? We want to, x is the variable. So differentiating with respect to x here, this is fixed, so it's zero. The derivative of this is x. Oh, uh, no, the derivative of this is y. Derivative of x, half x transpose x is x here. So I should have written, maybe I should have written, uh, why is this y minus this? This should have been x minus y. And uh, since I have no restrictions, I could have uh, written a negative here and then I would have uh, differentiated and gotten the same expression here. I took a minus here and uh, then to the derivative, I'd get a zero at the uh, optimum x. And so x equals y minus, from this expression, I get x equals y minus a transpose mu. Now, pre-multiplying both sides with a, I get ax equals ay minus aa transpose mu. Now, ax minus b equals zero. So what is this ax here, the left-hand side? It's b only? It's b. So b equals ay minus aa transpose mu. See, here we got an expression, but it connects x with mu. Right? We don't know x and we don't know mu either. But we do know that ax equals b, right? 
That's why I use this step. And since AX equals B, I get an expression involving only one uh, uh, unknown variable, uh, mu. Solving, I get, uh, well, I get uh, AA transpose mu equals AY minus B, whence mu equals AA transpose inverse AY minus B. Once I get the value of mu, I can use this expression here, y is fixed. So x equals y minus a transpose of this mu is this expression here, a a transpose inverse a y minus b. So this is my projection. So uh, I take the y terms together, I get this matrix here uh, times y plus a transpose a a transpose inverse b okay so the projection onto this hyperplane of uh, uh, the point y is px plus this a transpose a a transpose inverse b of uh, just uh, just this not of so this p is given by this matrix here I minus A transpose, A, A transpose inverse A is this P here. And it's called the projection matrix. What if I project X onto the hyperplane? What will I get? I will get X back. Okay, if it's already on the hyperplane, then it, there's no need to project it further, right? So if I apply the projection operation, I'll again get back X. And that will be um, part of the homework for you to figure out. Any questions? Just a small typo, replace this plus with a negative. Okay, so with this, uh, we today uh, end today's lecture, unless you guys have another, any other questions? I guess no, I don't, we don't have any questions. Yeah, me neither. Okay. So we'll stop here and continue on Thursday. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.